This video is about non-uniform circular motion in which a particle moves in a circle with changing speed, like this ball on a ramp. Notice how the ball picks up speed as it rolls downhill. It attains its greatest speed when at the low point of the track, slows down on its way back up to the top of the loop, and speeds back up again as it heads back down. The green arrows show the velocity of the ball at various points. Let's also talk about the acceleration of the ball at various points on the path, starting right here. The ball is moving in a circle, so it has centripetal acceleration given by v squared over r. That's true whether the particle's speed is constant or not. This is the acceleration that has to do with the fact that the particle is changing direction, and it always points toward the center of the circle. But the particle is also undergoing a speed change. It's slowing down as it climbs up the track. So there's a second acceleration along the path of motion or tangent to the motion. When a direction change is also involved, the speed changing acceleration is typically referred to as tangential acceleration. At the top of the circle, the speed is smaller, so the arrow representing centripetal acceleration has to be smaller as well, but it's still perpendicular to the motion. The particle slows down as it ascends and speeds up as it descends. And at the top of the path, there's a moment when the speed is not changing at all, so there's no tangential acceleration here. Moving to the other side of the circle and assuming not too much loss of energy, the speed of the particle is about the same as it was on the other side of the circle, so the centripetal acceleration looks like this. And now the particle is speeding up, so the tangential acceleration looks like this. The speed is greatest at the bottom of the circle, so the length of the centripetal acceleration vector is largest there. This is another spot on the curve where the speed is not changing, so there's no tangential acceleration there. Let me pick one last point on the circle. How do you think the centripetal and tangential accelerations will look here? The centripetal acceleration has to point toward the center of the circle, and the length needs to reflect the fact that the speed is greater than it was at the top, but less than it will be at the next spot. Meanwhile, the particle is speeding up, but not quite as much as it will be at the next point, so that purple arrow is non-zero, but still shorter than it will be at the next point. By the way, the tangential and centripetal accelerations are really just components of the overall acceleration. If you want the total acceleration of the particle, you can always add them together like this. Now I'm going to turn things around and ask you to imagine a random particle that's cruising along with a velocity represented by this green arrow. And this is the acceleration of the particle. What does that acceleration mean? Think back to the last slide where I added the components of acceleration together to get a resultant. Now I'm going to take this acceleration and resolve it into components that are tangent and perpendicular to the motion. The component along the line of motion indicates that this particle is slowing down, while the component perpendicular to the velocity vector indicates that it's turning. So although the particle is moving tangent to this line at the moment, it will soon be here. And the path of motion might look something like this. Now, there's nothing to suggest that this motion is going to be circular. In fact, if the acceleration vector keeps pointing in that direction, the motion certainly will not be circular. I would probably refrain from referring to the acceleration perpendicular to the motion as centripetal acceleration, and instead just think of it as direction-changing acceleration. However, it's possible to draw a circle that will approximate the path of this particle over a short distance. And going back to the equation for centripetal acceleration, you can just solve for r and make the appropriate substitutions to recover the radius of the circle that approximates the path at this particular point. Let's take this idea one step further and apply it to a familiar example, projectile motion. We talked about projectile motion without addressing tangential and perpendicular accelerations at all. Instead, we noted that this kind of motion is special because it's possible to distill the motion into horizontal and vertical motion. We have constant speed in the horizontal direction and constant acceleration in the vertical direction. By treating the horizontal and vertical motion separately, it's possible to calculate a lot of useful things like how long the object will be in the air and how far it will go but it's possible to get some additional perspective on the motion by distilling the accelerations into their tangential and perpendicular components. Take this point, for example. Here are the components of the acceleration. Looking at the tangential acceleration, you can see that the speed of the object is changing at this point. 
In particular, it's slowing down. By looking at the perpendicular acceleration, you can see that the direction of the motion is also changing. If you look at this point over here and resolve the acceleration into its components, you can see that now the perpendicular acceleration has gotten smaller, which means that the direction change is not as dramatic. Meanwhile, the tangential acceleration has gotten bigger, which means that the rate of change of the speed is greater at the second point than it is at the first point. There's one place along the path where the speed is not changing at all. Can you figure out where that point is? At the top of the path, the acceleration vector is totally perpendicular to the motion, so the speed is not changing at all there, only the direction. To sum up, although the formula for centripetal acceleration was derived for a particle moving in a circle at constant speed, the formula still applies to a particle moving in a circle with varying speed. Furthermore, if a particle has an acceleration that is not tangent to the motion, that acceleration can always be resolved into components that are perpendicular and parallel to the motion. The part of acceleration tangent to the motion tells you about speed change, and the component of the acceleration perpendicular to the motion tells you about the direction change.